Though a lifelong gamer, it was just last night that I beat my first Grand Theft Auto game. The concept of stealing cars and all the other loot activities I'd had described of the series never appealed to me. It wasn't until Grand Theft Auto V was recommended to me by a friend as an excellent open world game with a carefully constructed environment and tremendous opportunity for exploration thereof that I was willing to try it. The series has long been controversial for romanticizing and rewarding immoral and well-performed criminal behavior as the player embodies immoral and criminal characters. You know, because real life never rewards those willing to break the law with immoral acts and get away with it. Some women get abused and objectified, laws are shattered and their enforcers get maimed and murdered along the way, innocent people are killed and or robbed, and both public and private property are defaced due to both interest for personal gain and generally cavalier criminal spirit. It seems that producing such a game would be irresponsible and destructive. After all, kids play video games, and why on earth would you want to experience those kind of things for yourself anyway? Well, let me first deal with the misconception for at least this particular installment of the Grand Theft Auto series. I can't speak for all the games, as this is the only one I've ever played. But while I did encounter all the aforementioned horrible things and more, I also found a lot of my expectations reversed. I expected flat, bland characters to carry me through one act of depravity to the next, you know, like the kind you find in most film portrayals of crooks. Instead, I controlled three interesting characters with unique backstories, personalities, styles, philosophies, and personal issues. I expected a visual spectacle with little substance, but I found myself playing a game loaded with clever satire and subtle wordplay, from jabs made in dialogue to radio commercials to the names of buildings and organizations. I saw men and women of various body types, ethnicities, and attitudes. I saw beautiful female characters presented both as strippers and stern professional businesswomen. I found a story, well, not flawless, and certainly messed up, that was better than the script for most action movies I've ever seen. The game is much more than just the things for which its series is critiqued, and you can't appreciate that without playing it. For the criticisms levied against the games of this genre, it should go without saying that society seems pretty tolerant of enjoying films and TV series wherein horrible things happen and we find ourselves rooting for anti-heroes or sympathizing with the wrong side of the written law or human morality. From vigilante films like Taxi Driver to straight up criminals you'll find in Goodfellows, Casino, Scarface, and Breaking Bad. Some people even watch slasher movies rooting for the killer to rack up a high body count and society doesn't seem to mind too much. The two key differences that I imagine account for this are that video games are seen as traditionally marketed to kids and that they involve you actually taking control of a character, not just watching it. The fear of video games poisoning children is nothing new, and of course it expands across all mediums. People are afraid of children's innocent being ruined by adult-themed movies, TV shows, advertisements, and music, too. That's pretty easily addressed by two concepts. One, accept that children do become adults at some point, and the entirety of that transition is composed of hopefully incremental introductions to the fact that their childhood innocence is a farce and bad things actually do happen. Two, Supervise the content consumed by your kids. That's difficult, but it is your responsibility as a parent or guardian. As for controlling villainous characters, bidding them through multiple acts of immoral and criminal nature, it's fun. One of the appeals of video games is that they enable and empower us to do things we never could and even things we never would otherwise. If a princess were captured right now, I most certainly wouldn't make it my personal business to rescue her at all costs, but in a video game I would. If the gaming industry takes advantage of this, as it has in the past, it has the ability to inspire empathy in players for characters they may not have understood or even considered before. Female writers can put male gamers into a female avatar's world and make them consider things from her perspective. In this case, as a straight-edged, law-abiding citizen who feels guilty if I even break the speed limit, I was able to empathize with multiple criminal characters, all male but spanning a wide age gap, and two ethnicities and two nationalities, some struggling with more psychosis than others. Which leads to the most important thing about those who criticize any number of things about games. While I agree video games in general would be classier if they used their bloodshed and violence and overt sexualization more carefully, only doing so if it had a meaningful impact on the player and the characters, People have to understand that it's not that difficult for most of any age to separate fiction from reality. 
I just beat a game in which I spent time weaving through one-way traffic going the opposite direction, shooting or evading police, and seducing strippers. When I turn off that game, I'm able to recognize that while those activities are romanticized in the game, that's not how reality works. And with the exception of sports games, those that attempt to mimic reality as closely as possible usually don't appeal to me. I don't think a significantly high percentage of kids who play Payday are apt to consider bank robbery a good thing or a good idea, even if they're really good at that game, with that as its primary objective. Video games are still a young medium, which still have a lot of catching up to do to get to the technology at their disposal. In 43 years, we've gone from Pong to games that look better and create a more immersive experience than CGI-dependent movies. We'll get to that point where we have more minority characters well represented in video games and where careful writing takes precedence over graphic quality more often. I'd argue that we're well on our way. In the meantime, when you hear about a game like Mortal Kombat or Grand Theft Auto, don't judge it until you've played it, because many prejudgments seem to have been based on criticisms from others who haven't played it themselves. At least that was the case for me. Big mistake.